As so many people, I spend a lot of my time commuting through the city and the country. I really want to use this precious time for practice. And in this video I show you how you can practice on the bus, the tube, the plane or whatever public transport you use. that you only need your music scores, headphones, um, your mobile phone and maybe a pencil and then you're ready to go. The first tip that I want to introduce for you is maybe nothing surprising but it's active listening. What I mean with active listening is that you will have your music score in front of you and you are listening to the music and what you can do when you are actively listening is that you can mark um, what you hear different or what you think the uh, musician on your recording is doing differently. If you use an iPad for example, you can use another layer just to mark up those things that um, you acknowledged after listening actively to your score. The next tip is metronome practice. It's very easy, you just have to have your headphones of course, your mobile phone with a metronome app on it and your music score and you put in beats per minute that is reasonably fast I would say and then you just um, tip with your finger the rhythm. And that's very, very helpful, especially for new music that you know already the rhythm of the piece and then putting it together is much easier. I mentioned this next tip in my orchestra video already. I will link it here somewhere. If you haven't seen that, please check it out. Is that you do time markings in your score when you are playing an orchestra score or for example also a real very long piece and you want to orientate yourself on one recording that is very long. So you put timestamps in your score that you don't have to listen all the time to it and that you know exactly when this theme is starting and you can also do that when you are on the bus or on the tube. Then of course you can listen to different recordings um, especially with solo literature in music you hear a lot of differences in interpretation nowadays and I think it's really interesting that you hear what could be different or what people are doing different that you can do your own interpretation. What I also do very very often is that I review or write my practice plans. This is very helpful because normally when I'm on my way to my practice session when I practice at school, for example, um, I know already what I'm going to do on that day if I haven't written that. And I all can also reflect um, my practice session afterwards, what went great, what with which piece do I need more time, uh, was I concentrated or not. These are all things that you have to remember and you, and you can use the time to write in your practice journal and to write about your practice or what you are going to do, which is very helpful. What I also do sometimes is that I mark up my score, which means for me that I put in pedals, that I mark up some dynamics, um, some fingering, some phrasings, for example, if I hear it um, in a recording or um, just my own interpretation, if I know it already, or when I have a new score, I put in the bar numbers and um, put in my little um, letters for different um, repetition points. Um, that is all things that you can do on the bus and on the train. But I have to say only if you have a train or a bus where it's not so shaky because otherwise um, I also had scores where I did it and it looks very, very weird because I didn't have like a normal straight bus ride. It was a little bit shaky and then my hand um, was not that straight. And for the last thing, I think you need internet but um, sometimes when you ha are on the bus, you have internet, on the tube sometimes not, um, is that you look up your marks in the 
um, scores. I know that there are different composers who wrote their marks in different languages. Hindemith and Schumann, for example, they only wrote their marks in German. And then there are like Claude Debussy or Ravel who only wrote in French. And my French, for example, is not the best. And I always have to look up those things. I know already a lot of them, but not everything, of course. And it's very, very good that you know what that means or for example also looking up the title what does impromptu mean what does fantasy mean um what is the origin of this piece and um, that's very very helpful to know i hope you like this video and you have now a very productive bus journey you can of course do all these things when you're on holiday or at home and you don't want to take your instrument with you please subscribe to my channel that you don't miss any further videos and i will see you in my next video bye